Today we're moving on to capping this hole. The guys are putting all our rigging in. This is all our gear shifters, all the uh, internals. Wouldn't it be great if we could work on our boats like this all the time, but everything is pre-wired. I think they call this stuff pre-assembly. All the wiring harnesses for like your trim, all your plumbing in, uh, all your plumbing, all your drains. You need to know what engine you're running by now, so you put the correct gearbox in here. All that's done at this point, and they can access all the internals real easily. So uh, you can see they're even getting some of my hydraulic steering. You can see it there. It's all my hydraulic steering cables, gear shifter cables. You see here's the plumbing for our live wells. All that stuff is done at this point, so they can uh, do it a lot faster. It's a whole lot faster to do it this way than to uh, put everything together. If you ever rigged a boat, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's really hard to, to put all that together, um, running cables through the hull of a boat. So pre-assembly, before they cap the boat, they put as much as possible to make the process go faster. How long is this? Y'all been working on that just this morning? Doing all the all this here, or is it, uh, how long did it take? To yesterday morning? To now so I've been in this stage of day this is where things start to slow down it was real fast when we we're back here uh, doing all the molds and so forth but once they get here to pre-assembly everything starts to get really intricate and there's a lot of a lot of little subtle details from from right from right here to the end how many how long do you think it takes a week but from here to the very end to finish about a week about a week so from this stage to the end, it's about a week, week long process. So it's literally days over there and then a week over here. Open, I was just talking about rigging. I was just sharing about how much profanity I've used over the last 20 years, rigging wires and boats. And Opie has the nerve to say he kind of enjoys it. So we're talking about how easy it is to rig a boat. Wouldn't it be cool if you could just well, you need to put a transducer in, put an extra light, put some wires in, just take your cap and just like hit a button and it just separates. Is it so much easier for them to run all this stuff now? Opie says he's enjoys that for the gates because I've rigged too many boats and used too much profanity. Because it'll do that to you. Opie, how do you do this without cussing though? <laughs> Years of practice. <laughs> years of practice. I'm not going to say I don't. You, wait a minute. Years of practice working on the boats or years of practice cussing? Both. <laughs> Both. Both. <laughs> I can't do it. All of this stuff, like all of these wires, sometimes have to be run all the way down the length of the boat. While it's capped and screwed and foam and stuff is in the way, and it don't ever work the way it's supposed to. I don't care how many tubes in there. If they got a tube in there, there's too many wires in there. Or your wires too big. They make transducer wires so big nowadays that you just it just doesn't work right. It never works right. So I just wish Opie said he's gonna make me a boat that the cap separates from the hole just like this. So if I need to replace the transducer, it just comes apart. yeah, it just comes apart and like it's like hydraulics and it just lifts up three foot off the hole. So in, my, in my opinion, this is probably the most important part. Because you're going to look, I'm going to show you some stuff that they're rigging up right now. This absolutely essential to your tournament fishermen. Like all of this stuff here, dude, this is life. This is all your tournaments. All your tournament stuff. This is oxygenators, um, your live well pumps. Am I, your way, am I your way I'm jacking you up? You see, he's running all these pipes here. This is this is all your plumbing, plumbing fills. Lose all your water to your to your live well. Everything. I'm gonna go on a stretch and say this is almost the most important part. If anything goes wrong here, it's really hard to deal with later on. Perfect example. It was just wasn't lining up on the hole just right. So it's just gonna cut. Just cut that off with a little sawzall blade, just so it sandwiches and there's no pressure on your screw. All that's going to cap just perfectly. Here we go. 
That's what your bass boat is, folks, right there. You got a hole, you got a cap. Did all our pre-wiring. I can't even say that. Pre-wiring? And we're gonna drop that bad boy down there and make a sandwich out of it. Make sure everything lines up. Just slide it down like that. Slide it in. What? Take that and then put a screw in it. Yeah. Just like that. Then put a screw in that guy. Hold it tight. The whole one side in there. Oh, it's starting to look like a piece of candy, boy. All right, so what do you think? Look at it. It's gonna look like a daggum grocery store snack right there. Got a little bit of blue, a little bit of gray. It kind of, like from a distance, this looks like a charcoal color from a distance. You can see it looks totally different when you back away from it. So they're already uh, what they call dry fitted the cap and the hole. What they'll do is put the whole deal together, make sure everything's going to butt up just right, and then they take it back apart and uh, they'll put glue. They call it mud. It's basically like an adhesive that they use to uh, to basically adhere the hole to the cap, and that's what he's doing now. Is just going around everywhere on the, the cap of the boat. Is this an adhesive or is this something for water or? Uh, adhesive. That's an adhesive right here. So he's putting an adhesive all the way around the cap of the boat here. We go all the way around with this. All right, so we're gonna to talk to uh, to Marta here. Marta does all the carpet work, right? Yes. You do Marta everything. Eats everything. All yeah. the lids, everything. So she's getting. This is her working station right here. And uh, every time I come in here, Mark is always hard at work. She won't even talk to me. She works so hard over here on the carpet. You see, she's got a lid laid out. You know what boat this is for, Martha? The, what boat is for it? 21. For 21? Yes. So it's for uh, probably that white boat over there. Right? Yeah, white yeah. and black. Yeah. So how long does it take you to do all the lids for one boat? Um, 30 minutes. 30 minutes? You do all of these in 30 minutes? Yeah. 30, Are you kidding me? So then tomorrow she finished for the last. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. gotcha. So you glue, you do all the glue, yeah. and then tomorrow after the glue dries, you come back, cut out the, the holes for all the yeah. lids and everything. Yeah. Thirty minutes. If anybody's ever put carpet on a boat, you know how long it takes to put uh, to do the lids. It's taking me like a couple weeks to get to this. She says she does all of these lids in thirty minutes. So. Oh, uh, okay. Gotcha. So this is what a finished lid looks like. This is the one she's yeah. doing for a 21. Yeah. Smoking. Awesome. You do almost all great carpets here, right? Yeah, great. Everything That's on great. everything great. Cool. Thanks, Marsha. I appreciate it. Yeah, that was a what you call a dry, what you say, dry cap it. Dry cap it. And then you pull it back apart, put the mud, make sure everything fits together. And then you pull it back apart. And you say mud. Mud. It's, it's a polyester bonding agent. Poly oh, I can't say that again. What the? What was it? Polyester. I hear you, Opie. Now you learned that at school. Polyester bonding it. agent. I read a lot. Oh my God. So basically, they're going to glue it, screw it, and cap it, is what's going to happen next. Exactly. They're going to glue it, screw it, and cap it. But they put it together to make sure everything's going to fit right, because if you put that glue on there and then you got. You have to shave off a little foam or something. Then you got to take it back off, and then your glue just doesn't adhere to the fiberglass as, as good. Or as as Opie says, your polyester bonding agent doesn't adhere per properly. 
So uh, they just kind of, kind of just do an exhibition run, come back, put it on. You hear that word I use? Exhibition. That's big time. So he's gonna put that on, and uh, and then it'll be finished, finished product, ready to go. Edge of the cap, right? Goes in the center. Ah, oh, goes in the center of the boat. That's actually the uh, the adhesive that's gonna bond the deck and the whole action together. I imagine that's pretty important. I hate to be riding down the lake and uh, see a hole out behind you and you're, you're still going. But seriously, that's a very important step because all that force, that 250 horsepower that I'm going to put on the back of here is doing everything it can to separate it. So they have to go through a lot of steps to get this step exactly perfect before we move on to the next step. There you go. Hey. So basically, the rod boxing and all is going to sit on this mud right here, right? Yep. He's gonna spread that out. You see, he's kind of outlined the little area there, a little line. He's following that with his adhesive, and you'll see how all this kind of butts up together. Look at the adhesive. See, they got several patches just set up strategically, put out so it uh, bonds to the cap of the boat, which is right there. This is our hole here. And they're gonna bond all that together. Not only is it bonded from the bottom, it's going to be bonded from the sides, put screws, adhesive along the sides. They're also doing it. Oh, but you told me they, they put glass back here too, right? So he's, uh, he's bonded it all along the transom, which is, this is super important back here. This is where all the vibration and power is, is uh, transferred back here on the transom. So now they got had the whole deal dry fitted, put the mud in the bottom of the hole. I know everything is going to fit together just perfectly. I'm going to go back and uh, make this falcon sandwich again. Transom, that's what it adheres cap to the hole. The mud they put in the transom, they'll screw this down and all that a vacuum seal very well. Waterproof it. There's no wood in the old days, there was wood involved in all this. Of course, nowadays, there's no wood involved in any of your transom stringers, anywhere, any of the construction of the boats, all fiberglass. Definitely starting to look like a bass boat. All right, folks, so there you have it. We got the cap. We got all the, uh, what do you call that? Pre assembly done? Okay. Pre assembly done. So, uh, you got any questions about the process here, how they did everything? Any questions about uh, about the boats in general? How about putting it in the description box? Not in the description box. Put that, I'll put it in the description box. You put it in the comment section. Sorry about that. But uh, any questions you got, anything you want to know about Falcon boats, you can already start to see what boat this is. This is the 205 that I'm running next year. So we're doing the 205 and uh, still haven't quite nailed down what engine we're going to run yet. That's it. Got any questions, put it in the comment section. Let me know how you like this video. What you think about the boat build so far? Got a lot more stuff to do. This is just the beginning. This is just the, this is where the process starts to slow down a little bit and you start to get into some of the intricate detail, details of the whole boat build. So uh, thank you for taking time to watch. I'm going to have another video coming up soon.